Christian, I had a knowledge of God. Even though I was lost, I had at least the knowledge. And during this particular night, I ran out of this house. I've never told you this. Never told you this one. And I was talking to this woman, and there was all these poster boards. On, I had a big old house. It was an old house on the side of the wall. I'm sitting on the couch, and the wall's right here to the left. I mean, I'm, and I'm talking. We get to talking about God and about the power of God. And I mentioned the name of Jesus. And, man, that thing tore every one of them things off the wall. I could feel him as he went out the door. You know what I did? I left and went to my friend's house. They all thought I was crazy, but I wasn't crazy. I told you 15 minutes, maybe give me 20. I'm just about done. I'm trying to show you something. I want you to understand that God doesn't want us having anything to do with this holiday. And there's a reason. Because I know it looks innocent. Oh, they're all dressed up. They all look pretty. That's the deception. Remember God said, in the last days, be not deceived. Did He not say that? So Halloween night. This, this I know because his name was Greg. He's the biggest dope smoker I've ever met in my life. He smoked more dope than anybody I've ever met to this day. That's all he did was smoke dope. But he was a great guy. I loved him. Curly hair. I can see him right now. Curly hair, them glasses. He was smart. But man, he, 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 had, them, he had them big old bones. He'd smoke dope like they was going out of style. He said one night he was sitting in the park. He said, this woman come running down the tree streets. I was, I'm going to tell you what. Johnson City was an evil place, church. Evil place. Probably the most evil place I ever lived. More devils than Johnson City where I've ever been. She come running down the street. Listen to me, girlies. She come running down the street. I mean, as fast as she's ever run. He thought somebody was trying to hurt her. She said, can you help me? Can you help me? She said, he said what's going on? She said, you're not going to believe what happened. You don't think I'm crazy. Greg, this, he told me the host on earth. I still remember him telling me to this day. God knew I'd tell it, didn't he? He said she was invited by this so-called seancer. We're going to have a seance, he said. In the tree streets in Johnson City, if you've ever been up there, the oldest houses are huge houses, ancient, like back from, you know, bi uh, not biblical times, but, but you know, uh, back from Civil War times. Huge, monstrous rooms. Well, this guy was not a, a seance. He was a Satanist. She said they were sitting up there. And he got lighter fluid. And he, the, he, she said the room, the room was as big as the church without the pews. It was that big of a room. And he drew this huge circle, which was a pentagram. And he, he took it with lighter fluid, drew, drew, the, drew the horned goat and everything with his lighter fluid. And he lit that circle. <laughs> He started, she said that he started saying some kind of chant or something. She said this great big brownish looking thing that looked like some horned god or something come up out of the floor and was in the sin. She said she ran for her life. And then one night almost on Halloween in October around my birthday, I'd been drinking that night. And even then, God protected me. And I went upstairs on the second floor. This was this time. This was the next to my last year. I lived in a little apartment complex. It was a wild place, church. I'm going to tell you, it was, it was wild. I'd been drinking. Listen to me. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody needs to hear me. I'd been drinking Bacardi and 7-Up. And I was loot, man. And on the second floor, there was a witch. I knew she was a witch. And I walked up, and, and her husband, I'm glad her husband liked me because the door was open, and I just barged, I didn't knock, the, I just walked in, and I said, read my palm, read my palm. I want you to tell me about my future. And her husband comes out. Of course, he knew me. He didn't know me that good, but thank God the Lord was protecting me. And so, Brother Bill, I reached my palm out to this woman, and she began, that's, by the way, you've heard about palm read, that's the point of contact. That's the devil. That's a familiar spirit. That's not God. And she began to, began to tell me about my life. And she was doing real good until all of a sudden it felt like that she got shocked. I mean, literally like something electric just, I mean, she jumped back from me. I mean, five, just, and she just, her eyes got real big. Man, it shook me up. He, her husband jumped, and this true story, and she jumped. And I said, what's wrong? She looked at me. She said, you need to leave my house. And 
I thought, well, well finish reading my palm. She said, what, what have I done? I didn't do nothing. I said, you jump back from me. She, I said, well, read my palm. She said, I can't. I said, well, why not? She said, because something's blocking it. God was with me. I want you to know tonight, there's no doubt in my mind, I wanted to preach a message tonight. I was going to preach about Naaman. God wouldn't let me. Let me tell you how this all finalized this, this message. And then, I'm, I, I've got to get my yard mowed because it's supposed to rain. So I'm, I've got to get it mowed. And my mower never stops. Once you, know, once you get your mower running, I got my tire fixed. I'm after about done mowing. And my mower stopped, so I had to stop. And when I stopped and I sat down, I had to recharge my battery. I had a battery charger, so I had to get still before God. It's almost like, now you're not preaching on naming tonight. Mm-mm. No, no. Mm-mm. Some of you were here the first time I ever preached a message on Halloween. A lot of people left the church after I preached that message that night. But I want to tell you something right now. You look up here. I don't apologize for it one bit. Because I want you to know from the heart of God tonight. I want you to not see Marcus. I want you to hear the voice of God. That God has nothing to do with Halloween. Nothing. Why it is even here in the middle of the harvest. You know, uh, we go through September, we feel God, we get into October, and then right in the, about the last part, here's this holiday. And I hate this holiday because it has nothing to do with nothing but evil. People don't understand. And the only look at me, young people, and the only reason they don't understand because they've never been taught. And I used to celebrate it too. But I didn't know the whole truth about it. And I remember when the Lord said to me, He said, Mark, I don't want you to celebrate Halloween. That's when it all started. And I said, well, Lord, I said, you know, there are going to be kids come to my, to my house. And I just thought it would be okay. I'd always give them preaching tapes. I said, I'll give them preaching tapes. And God said, no part of it whatsoever. And that's where it started. And I, and I will tell you right now, you look at this preacher. And when I stand before God, He'll tell you that I told you the truth tonight. But me and my wife and my kids... And, you know, I, I, I'm thankful because they've, they've never really given me a hard time about not going out. Gabriel said to me, Daddy, I, I've never got to celebrate Halloween. Daddy, I want candy. I said, I'll buy you some candy. I'll give you some candy. He said, okay, Dad, I'll take you up on it. All right. That's what he said. I want my candy. But everybody in here, you know something. I'm, 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 not, I'm not mad at you, and God's not mad at you, but everybody needs to hear the truth. Somebody in here tonight, you needed to hear this message. Some of you I'm preaching to the choir. I know some of you don't celebrate it. Oh, but there's nothing wrong with that preacher. Those little kids coming up to the door and all their Halloween costumes and knocking on the door. But you've got to know the origins behind it. Nobody ever got to be a drunk without taking the first sip of liquor. I got to be a drug addict you without starting on something. That's the way the devil does. He'll draw you in. He's a deceiver. You still love me, don't you? I love you tonight. I praise God tonight. Amen for this word. And I'm sorry I didn't mean to keep you so long, but I wanted to get the I could tell you I could tell you one more story, but I think you got the message. There were some friends of mine. They went to this Halloween party. God wasn't there. They didn't know God. A lot of them, I mean they, they might have known God and known him maybe here. They they didn't have a relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? We all Everybody knows there's a God. The Bible says that the devils know and tremble, but they don't know Him. They've all been drinking and having a good time, dressed up. They've been having food and just, you know, girls over, guys over, and just and late into the night, and they took this picture. Hold this for me just a second, Hunter. They think that they're having fun. They're living their life. They don't have any mindset of what's going on in their life because they don't know no better. And the, the, it's not dark yet. But it's it's getting dark. It's 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 it, you know it, I don't know how I mean in the picture it wasn't completely dark outside, but where the light was right next to the table, on the back side of where they took the picture there was a screened in porch. I mean a great big like we used to have out here. We I guess we still have it where the two windows are and you can slide it open and walk out on the porch. When they took the picture, there was somebody else in that picture. 
And this thing, man, looked like a, I mean, it looked like, it's kind of hard to describe. It looked like a, like a gremlin, like in the movie, but it was real big. It had this snarly nose, this terrible looking face, nothing. It was a devil. And it was in the picture when they developed it. You ever heard about something like that happen? I don't know how it happened, but it did. And when they developed the picture in the screen door, in the window behind them, this thing is gr- right behind them looking in, growling at them. Boy, I tell you what, that's a photo op for somebody, isn't it? Yes, so many people, you know, they want their preachers to tickle their ears. They want the preacher to tell them what they want to hear. But you know what? I love you too much. I'll tell you the truth. And nobody's mad. I'm not saying that that you're going to die and go to hell if you celebrate Halloween. But I do want you to know tonight that God told me to tell you that I wouldn't. And then leave it up to you. It's your choice now. You remember what he said, a fool despiseth his father's instructions. Tonight I want you to know that I don't care what they say about October 31st or what they want to call to try to give it to the devil. I get up every morning. I say, this is the day, especially on that day, that the Lord has made. And I will be glad and rejoice. you believe that? Will you give our God a hand clap of praise tonight? Will you stand with me? I think she's been listening to me. Have you seen what she's drawn? She's got the face of the devil. She's got a cat, a wing bat, and all these little gremlins running around. This girl knows something that I, that I didn't know, I believe. I believe these little ones are in tune with God a whole lot more than me. Amen. But let's, let's, let's remember one thing, though. Let's remember one thing as we close today. That God loves you, and we've all got to learn, and we've all got to start somewhere. All of us. Amen. You still love me, don't you? Amen. Will you stretch your hands this way? I'm going to let you go home. It's late. I want you to go home. I want you to relax. Enjoy yourself. And remember, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep Him in the focal point of your life. Father, tonight, Lord, I thank You. I thank You, God, for Your mercy. I thank You, God, for Your grace. Most of all, God, I thank You, Lord, for Your Word that is true. Lord, I ask you again tonight to be with your people. Protect us as we leave this place tonight. Let your mighty hand and God deal with your people, Lord, about the truth. You show them the truth, God. I tell everybody, search everything out. But remember what God said that the Holy Spirit, He won't lead you into error. but He will guide you and lead you into all truth. And Lord, tonight I thank you for these people. I ask you, Father, now as we leave this place to protect them, keep your mighty hand upon them until we meet here again. And God, we're quick, as always, to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hey, take some time. Hug your neighbor's neck and tell them that you love them. Tell them that Jesus is on the throne of your heart. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.